Hey, welcome back to Blooming Beauty with Katie Messer. I am Katie Messer. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, spiritual um, challenges. So um, the main one we're going to focus on today is um, knowing what the Bible says, but not walking it out. So um, the book of James chapter 1 verses 22 through 25 talks about uh, a person who looks at themselves in the mirror and then walks away and immediately forgets what they see. And so the danger of that, when you then relay it back to um, spiritual matters, is if you know all about Jesus and you know what to say and you know all the right words and you can quote John 3.16 and you potentially are even leading a Bible study or whatever like that, that's not what gets you to heaven. And that's not what gets you right standing with God. So it is through Christ alone. So it is by his grace, it's by the grace of God that any of us can come and approach him. So uh, the Bible says it is by grace through faith um, that no one can boast. So it, it is a gift from God. So um, today we're gonna be talking about salvation like a cookie. So. Some will say, I don't really like cookies, or, you know, I really am sugar-free, or, you know, gluten's just not my thing, or whatever. The point being, whatever your little prize is, just insert here, um, I believe salvation is like a cookie, or whatever your treat be, may be. Um, I sincerely believe that God allows every person uh, to have an opportunity to come to know him. So whether that be through a dream or a vision or uh, a vlog or a book or a song or, you know, whatever, um, I sincerely believe that everyone gets an opportunity to take a cookie. Um, I don't think anyone has withheld the goodness of God, um, but I don't think that we necessarily know when it's going to happen. And we don't necessarily know if we'll get more than one offering. So um, the, the necessity then of... Um, of responding to God is huge. It's epic. So um, one thing to consider is just um, the, the necessity to change lines. So what do I mean by lines? So if I had a three-cornered hat, I'd be putting it on right now. Um, we're going to be talking briefly about the doctrine of uh, federal headship. So what that means is Back in Genesis, uh, the federal head of the human race was Adam, because he was the first created. Um, Eve was created for his pleasure and to be his helpmeet. And um, when, he, when Adam was told not to eat from the, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, well, that was given to him. That wasn't a command given to Eve. So that's why after, you know, oops, we're going to eat from the fruit. That's why God came and tried to find Adam. He was going, hmm, you and I spoke about this. You know, I, I didn't mention it to Eve yet because hadn't created her yet. So anyway, um, so the importance of changing races. What do I mean? There's only one human race. We just, we just said that. So what happened was after... You had the rebellion of humanity, the fall of man, Genesis 3. Then we get to see what happens when we do things our own way. And we see Genesis chapter 5 is the first roll call, really, of who begot who, who was the father of who, yada, yada. And you see their name, and you see, and they died. And you see their name, and they had this son, and they died. And they died, and they died, and they died, and they died, and they died. And they died. So... The author is saying something with the words that he's choosing. And what he's saying is, and it was Moses who wrote this, by the way. Um, what he's saying is, sin will always lead to death. And even if it's not immediate physical death, it was spiritual death. So Adam and Eve had to leave the garden. They were kicked out because there was now a block between them and God. So that's the federal head of the human race. So in America, we understand this concept because we elect one federal representative 
to be over the entire country. So um, that's, that's what we do. So we vote them in and we say, okay, now you speak for us. And what the president says represents how we are perceived around the world. The same is true spiritually. So even though, you know, their Adam and Eve died and they had other kids, well, they still wore the, the, the sin of, uh, of, Adam and, of, of Adam. So what had to happen, then you have chapter 10 and there's another lineage and it's more, and they died and they died and they died. And it's like, okay, this is depressing. Why am I watching this? Well, the point that I'm trying to make is that we can't do it on our own. So people just became horribly wicked to the point where there was no one doing what was right and everyone was doing what was right in their own eyes. And we all know that, well, we're all pretty selfish. And so if we're all given the opportunity to do just what we want, we're gonna destroy ourselves and everything around us. And that's what was happening. So God sends a flood. And, but he saves a remnant. He saves one family, the family of Noah. And it wasn't that Noah was so much better than everyone else. So um, he was saved by grace, because grace is grace, because it's grace. So he was seen as righteous, and because he had faith. So for a hundred years, he was told by God to preach to the people. And so he did preach repentance, you know, change your ways, yada, yada, building this ark. God brought the animals to him. God is the one that closed the door. So here they go. Well, they get off the boat and no sooner, you know, had the water dried, here these eight people come off with all the animals and they start doing the same sin pattern. So what was the point of that? To show that on our own, we can't fix ourselves. We cannot positive think our way out of it. We cannot meditate out of it. We cannot uh, yoga our way out of it. No, it's not a matter of what we can do on our own because we can't, we proved what we can do on our own. We can screw it up and we can smile while doing it and say, well, I didn't mean it or it's really not as bad as you think. You just have to frame it in a different way. No, no. When it all comes out, we realize, you know what? I was wrong. I was wrong and I hurt that person and I was selfish. So what do we do? Well, we go back to Genesis. Genesis 3.15 is called the gospel in utero. What the heck does that mean? God says to the serpent, you will try and, you will bite the heel of Eve's offspring and Eve's offspring will cut off your head. Well, it sounds like really nice poetry, but what in the world does that mean? So what that means is Satan may have won the immediate battle with Adam and Eve, but God was assuring him, you have not won the war. Because there was one that would be coming that Adam would then be followed by what the Bible calls a second Adam, and that's Jesus Christ. So a new start, a, a reboot, a fresh beginning to anyone who would choose to change races. So what does that mean? To go from the family of Adam, humanity, to the family of God. So that is the doctrine of federal headship. So when we accept Christ into our hearts and we say, I've screwed up, I have done wrong, and I need you to forgive me, and I can't do this on my own. When we say that and we say, I, I, I want to turn from what I'm doing, I, I don't want to continue in this, and I need your help. I'm not going to trust in you and Muhammad and Confucius and, 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 and. No, it's just Christ alone. The Bible uses the word believe on, and in the original language, it means that the, the implication is to sit on a chair with all of your weight, put everything you have, all your eggs in one basket, basically. And so if you are willing to put all your eggs in one basket for Christ, you can do it right now. So, um, we will have an opportunity in a second to have a cookie <laughs> of salvation. So uh, the thing to remember is that um, it's not a matter of, you know, am I good enough or am I bad? I'm not really that bad or gosh, I'm so bad. I can't even approach him. 
No. Romans 3.23 says we have all fallen short of the glory of God. And so the idea is that not one of us deserves right standing with God. We have all, we are all with the last name of Adam, so to speak. We all are fallen, but Christ came to redeem us. So what that means is God wrapped himself in human flesh, said, they can't do it themselves. I'm going in, I'm going in. And he stepped down from his heavenly throne and the greatest rescue plan of all was launched to rescue humanity. And that's when you get a announcement from an angel to a virgin that you're going to have a child, Mary, and you're going, you know, his name will be Jesus, the, you know, Joseph was told. And uh, anyway, 33 years later, here he is dying for every screw up I've ever done and every screw up you've ever done. And from the cross, he says, it's finished. It is finished. And on the third day, he rose again. So he conquered death and he conquered sin. And in, um, in, in Corinthians, it says, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your victory? Because death has been swallowed up in the victory of Jesus Christ. And so today I want to offer to you your own cookie of salvation. If you've never before accepted Jesus, um, I want to encourage you to do it right now. You don't know if you will get another opportunity. And we, we frankly don't want to be arrogant enough to tell God, I just, want to, I just want to put this off another year or a month or whatever until I do my next crazy whatever. No. Why? Why? There's so much beauty in life that God wants to reveal to you and to, there's such a great adventure for you. But we have to put our own selfishness aside first. He's there. He's ready. He's already made a way. But the, the tomb was empty on the third day. He rose from the dead. So I'm going to um, I'm gonna pray. And if you'd like to join me, feel free. And feel free to comment below. Um, uh, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are God and there is no other. And we just ask that in this time, if, um, if there's anyone that would uh, come to you today just broken and just acknowledging that they can't do it on their own just like I can't no one can <laughs> and uh, we we need you Lord I just ask that you would um, that you would convict hearts and that you would let them know that you love them and that you have made a way for them to know you and that's through Jesus Christ that 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 barrier that sin barrier is removed and that perfect fellowship is restored we thank you, Lord, that, um, that you love each person listening and that you care for each person from every background and every culture and every square inch of this globe. And we just ask that any confusion um, would be blown away in Jesus' name and that you would just reveal yourself afresh. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, if you prayed with me, I would love to know. Um, feel free to, uh, to message me. Um, if not, thank you for listening, and I will have more things to come. So thank you for joining me for the Doctrine of Federal Headship. And uh, like I said, thanks for having a cookie with me. So have a great night.